I love learning new things. One of the favorite things that I did at the Bar Z Summer Bash in California last week was the Tom Lipton layout competition. It sounds simple. You can see a little picture here. He had this master jig and you had to use manual tools, dividers and, and scribes and punches and so forth to create a six hole pattern. And here's what the plate looks like when you, when you do it right at least. Uh, I did it three times and the first two times I failed. And I tell you, I never would have gotten it right if Tom hadn't helped me. And that's what I'm so excited to share with you guys is some of the things that I learned that are great skills that they're hard to pick up if you don't have the chance to work around someone who's so knowledgeable uh, like Tom was. So I appreciate it, Tom, for, for running this competition. What's cool as well, sort of, is that I don't know how many people, maybe 20, did the layout competition part of it. I just did it for fun on the side. And only one guy got it. So it is uh, it's awesome because it's easier when you know how to do it. It's just not easy if you just think, I'm going to try to pay attention. You're, you're probably not going to get it. So two-part video. First video right now, we're going to use Fusion 360. And we're going to make our own master template jig that we'll need to do to measure the plate that we're going to make in part two. And in part two, we will go through and I'll share what I learned about how to do this stuff correctly. So let's dive in. This will be a great fusion you know, beginner or, or basic slower video, both CAD and CAM. So we've got a new part. We're actually going to do a different rectangle. So sketch, rectangle, center, rectangle. And again, I want to sketch it with the z-axis pointed towards the sky. So I'm going to click on this face perpendicular to the blue line, blue is sky. And I'll click once, drag out, and I'll just hit 6, enter, 6, enter, and then enter twice, I think, gets me my 6 by 6 inch plate. And right click, press pull, click to choose my surface, and I'll type negative 0.25. So if you see now, we've got a 6 by 6 by quarter inch plate. Now I know we're going to need to put in a center axis for a future uh, pattern. So let's go ahead and do this. We'll do sketch point and we'll just click on this face to sketch the point on that face. And then I'm just going to sketch the point right here in the middle. See that little dot we got? And I can click stop sketch. And now I'm going to do construct axis perpendicular to face at point. Sounds like a lot, but really just means perpendicular to this face at that point, and you see we get this teal colored axis. One of the things I wanted to mention is you know, some folks have offered some great tips or, or even corrections on how I use Fusion 360 and all my CAD and CAM. And I want to emphasize two things. One, I appreciate those because it makes me better, and that's great. But my view and approach in, in life and in my machine shop learning is I don't necessarily care if I'm not doing it correctly. I want to learn. Don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to be stubborn. But what's important to me is that I can get it done. And sometimes getting it done is, means you got to be a little scrappy and you got to be creative. And I don't care if it's not the best way. I care that I can get it done. And I think the mindset of being able to think outside the box and not be so limited is sometimes really helpful. So when I do things wrong, um, again, I want to learn and, and by all means emphasize best practices. But I'm okay with that. So now we're going to create our little pins for the bolt pattern. So let's we'll click on center diameter circle, choose this face, and I'm just going to select one anywhere. And I'm going to do 0.21 uh, inches diameter. The punch that we're going to use is 0.215. So that should give us about a five thou clearance. I think that's about what Tom did. Maybe his was four thousandths, which is pretty tight because you know, that'll compound as you go around. You'll see in, in video two. Now I was practicing this morning for this video and I realized a good example of something I can't figure out. I would think I could sketch a dimension from here to there. And you can see, you can select both, but it's not letting me do it. I can do it in SolidWorks. Rather than get hung up on it, we know how we can fix this. Go to line, or here, oops, line, and click a line from there to there and hit escape to stop creating the line. Click on the line, we'll change it from normal to construction, and now we can dimension that line. It's a two inch radius, and if we look, watch this. 
we can drag it around and put it wherever we want. Perfect. So now I've created a four inch bolt hole pattern. Stop sketch, right click, press pull, choose our little thing and do 0.25. And you can see we've now got our little post. Tom's uh, plate were, had some dowel pins that he had turned down again to accommodate his punch diameter. And then he had, I think used a rotary table um, and drilled and then, and then press fit those pins in. We're gonna machine them off a plate because I think it's a better cam tutorial. And it's for me actually a little bit easier. We also played with a Stan's new DRO, really nice DRO that has bolt hole patterns built into it. You sort of pick which hole you're on and you move it until it beeps. It's, it was very cool. So now before we pattern these, we're gonna chamfer the top of them. So modify, chamfer, and just zoom in here and click that edge. And we'll say 0.02, oops, two, Perfect. Now you got a nice little chamfer. Should make it nice when we go to test our plate to see if we passed or failed. Create pattern. Oops. Create pattern. Circular pattern. Objects. Choose our post here and we'll scroll in and choose the fillet as well, or chamfer rather. And then I'll click on axis and I'll choose the axis we created and just type in six. That gives us six instead of three it defaulted to. Click OK. Boom. Now, just for kicks, let's say you wanted to orient this or clock it. Let's go back to our first one and let's just zoom in. And all you got to do is we can actually use the snap function and just snap, I think. Well, let's zoom in a little more. Snap it to that center one. Are we snapped onto it? Not quite. There we go. Stop sketch. And now you've got your volt hole pattern that's perfectly lined up if you want to. So. I think we're actually good on the CAD side. Pretty quick, right? Bang out the cam. Click on model, cam. Actually, you know what? Before we do that, one of the things that I have not played with in Fusion 360 but is really exciting is the render feature. I used to play with this in SolidWorks a little bit when I had access to a higher end version through a customer. And it is really cool. You can do some photorealistic plugins or I think it was default. I have not done anything with this, but for folks out there, if you're trying to do a Kickstarter campaign or some product images for a website, um, rendering is both really cool and normally, um, again, I'm kind of a layman, but normally it's like a really expensive add-on and it's just here in part of Fusion 360. So I gotta play, play around with that some more. Click on cam and let's just see how easy we can make this. Setup, we will do, let's see, our orientation looks pretty darn good. Let's zoom in here and see. Um, so the stock, yeah, nothing wrong with that. Click OK. And we will do 2D adaptive clearing. I'm going to use the one inch hog shear. And I'm going to change my feed rate, which I haven't updated in the tool library yet, to 4,040. And we can ramp in at 25. And well, all we've got to do, this is so easy, we can click this face, that selects our geometry, and then we just need to choose the right bottom height. We'll go to selection and choose this top here. So sorry if that was too fast. Let me start over. Adaptive clearing, pick my hog shear tool, click OK. I'm going to change the feed rate or RPM down to 4,000. This is just off. I'm changing my defaults here. And we could ramp in at 25. Geometry, I'm just going to click this face here, which if you'll notice, it, it leaves those pins unselected. And on, we don't want to machine down to the, the bottom of the model. We want to machine down to a selection. And we'll pick this plane here. And I'm going to add stock to leave on the radial side of 0.02. And honestly, I think we're good. <laughs> it's crazy. What? I mean, it's so, Grimzo and I were talking about this at the Tormach. We actually did a talk on making money with your Tormach or Tormach in a small business. You can click on a link, uh, one of these two corners for it. And it's so easy now compared to like 2006 and seven. Uh, so I won't, I won't uh, ramble about that, but it is awesome. Let's do a quick simulation. Turn on the stock it is. Okay, click play, speed it up. Yeah, I mean, rock on. 
<laughs> uh, this will be fun to machine. I'm curious to see how it comes out. You know, the the um, Superfly, or the, I say call that, the sh hog shear, shear hog, whatever, is not always a perfect bottom finish because the tool geometry won't actually matter for what we're doing here. Um, but we'll see how it turns out. Let's do 2D contour and clean up those pins. So click on there, change my tool to tool 31, quarter inch, and no stock to leave. We'll s click smoothing to smooth out the tool path, I guess. I haven't even looked into what that means. So that's perfect. Now, let's do this as a, a pattern. We could easily select all six, but let's say you had hundreds. Right click, add to new pattern, and let's see here, pattern type, circular, axis is here, and we'll just change it to six instances. Done. Click OK. And we will do 2D contour as well. This time we're going to select a chamfer mill. And geometry, we will select this. And it should recognize, it does, that it's a chamfer. And we're going to offset the tip by 0.1 inches so you're not cutting with the little tip of the, of the tool, which is really bad. It's brittle and you'll have much, much lower surface feet per minute. So generally do that if you can. And I think we'll be good. See what we get. Yeah, now let's take a look at the simulation on that. This will be cool. Uh, let's turn off stock and just see here. If you look, see how we're going to go further down. So we're cutting like halfway up the tool, which is awesome. Give us a nice chamfer there. And we'll do the same thing. Uh, see here, can I drag that to there? See, it looks like we've only got one instance of each in here. I'm not seeing the bottom one, but let's see here. Simu oh, hey, that's weird. If you go into simulation, it does show you. We, we've got it. Uh, that's perfect. So if we go real fast, you can see. Oh, but that's no good. Okay, so that's going to do a tool change each time. So that's no good. So let's just do this. Let's do the contour, drag it back up to setup, reorder these. So we want to do... Okay, so let's pattern this separately. No big deal. Okay, so now it's going to do that. It's going to do that. And then, oops, we've got to do those in reverse order. Okay, pattern two first, which is the th uh, th quarter inch end mill to clean them up, and then the chamfer. Now we're done. Let's go make some chips. We've got a six inch piece of aluminum in here, just a piece of scrap. Got a couple holes in it that aren't going to bother us. Now, we already faced off of the Superfly, but anytime you're working with extrusion, especially you know, this wide, use a straight edge and check for flex in it. Um, this one actually, it's flat now. It didn't have a ton in it, but most extrusion will have some flex up one way or the other. And we'll do a lot of fixture work where we'll clamp it along the center line. And when you do that, you want to use the, that natural extrusion flex as a spring. So you want to have this, the side that's, you want to have it like a mound or uphill. And then when you screw it down, you're flattening it out. Really important. If you do it the other way, you'll find that it won't fixture very well. And here, I think we're actually still going to have a little bit of a problem when we run the hog shear. We'll see how it goes. But you use our dead blow mallet, you'll hear, see that tinny sound? That's not good. That means in, in our part is tightened down and our, our parallels are solid. So we're not going to be able to clamp this any tighter. It's just you've got six inches of span between your jaws. So we'll see how it goes. I'm not, uh, I don't think we're going to break anything, but something to be conscious of. Let's rock and roll.
that was great. Uh, we never heard any of that ch chatter and vibration like I thought we would. And you, sure, there are some ripples, but man, it's really not a bad surface finish at all for that amount of material removal. Clean up the uh, posts to final diameter and then chamfer and we'll be done. Here she is, looks great. Of course, folks, if you're gonna do a fixture like this, don't do how I did it here. You wanna drill and ream holes and tap in pins. It's cheaper, it's a better use of material, and when you're moving, removing this much material, you will warp the part or, or you'll cause it to, uh, you, know, you have to put through a stress relief or something to have it not, um, you're, you're just, you're tearing a lot of material out of it. Um, obviously, our plate that we actually did do correctly is gonna fit with uh, lots of extra room because, um, Tom's pins were quite a bit, I mean, there's not tons of slot, but uh, you know, something like 10 or 20 thou per hole. So let's, uh, let's go on a video two here and see if we can duplicate the layout competition correctly. And either way, we'll show you all the little things that Tom taught us. So click here if you wanna see that. Otherwise, take care folks, see you soon.